Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Bob Durante, and I'm a senior director at S&P Global Market Intelligence, managing the America's Risk Solutions team within Risk Services. It's my pleasure to moderate today's video. Today's video, we will address two fundamental challenges in assessing the creditworthiness of banks. First is having the right data. Second is having the best credit scoring tool available. Now, we'd like to briefly introduce my colleagues, Jessica Bennett, Senior Product Manager in the S&P Global Market Intelligence Industry Product Management Group. Jessica is responsible for the financial institution's SNL product suite, including our bank data sets. I'd also like to introduce Rad Lukic, Director, S&P Global Market Intelligence. Rad is currently the analytical lead in the team on developing and managing credit risk scoring methodologies, including our bank scorecard, and as you know, a regular panelist on Risk Insights video series. Thank you, Jessica and Rad, for joining us today. Now let's get started. Today's agenda will focus on three broad topics. First, we will discuss the importance of having the highest quality data when evaluating the creditworthiness of a bank. Second, we will explore one example of a solution that can help face the challenges of this volatile credit climate. Third, in a case study format, we will demonstrate how the marriage of SNL Financial Bank Data and S&P Global Market Intelligence Bank Scorecard can confidently and conveniently help you assess the creditworthiness of your bank exposures, including identifying early warning signs of deteriorating bank credit quality. Before we begin, for those of you who still know of us as S&P Capital IQ or SNL, I want to briefly introduce to you S&P Global Market Intelligence bringing together the highest quality data and industry leading solutions from S&P Capital IQ and SNL Financial. S&P Global Market Intelligence integrates news, comprehensive market and sector specific data and analytics into a variety of tools to help clients track performance, generate alpha, identify investment ideas, understand competitive and industry dynamics, perform valuations and assess credit risk. Every day at S&P Global Market Intelligence, we collect, scrub, interpret, and analyze vast volumes of content, turning it into actionable intelligence on the global financial markets and companies and industries that comprise those markets, enabling our clients to make smarter business decisions, especially now that they have the option to leverage the best of both worlds. A strong example of this is the powerful synergy of the marriage of SNL financial data and and bank credit assessment scorecard. I think everyone watching understands the importance of quality data when analyzing credit quality, but I think one of our clients recently said it best. You don't wanna buy a Ferrari and put cheap fuel in it. Why buy a sophisticated scoring engine and then feed it with erroneous data? Good data is the key to improving the accuracy of the outputs from the scorecard. So Jessica, my client experiences with SNL bank data suggest that the market really trusts the data that SNL, SNL provides. In your opinion, what drives that trust? I could probably use the full 20 minutes of our video just to answer that question, but perhaps sharing our client profile will help provide some insight into our banking expertise and reputation. Our client footprint extends to every continent, including leading commercial and investment banks, 27 of the 30 globally systemically important banks, and the major bank regulators. Bank data could be complex. What type of adjustments does SNL apply to its bank data? SNL typically publishes public bank data from the earnings release within eight hours and from the annual and quarterly filings within 24 hours. In addition to being timely with our data, we're comprehensive and include important related data sets like European stress test data, country risk profiles, and country financial aggregates. This information provides meaningful context to your analysis. We're even working on expanding to cover regulatory financials worldwide. That commitment to quality is impressive. How about the timeliness of SNL bank data? So SNL typically publishes public bank financials from the earnings release within eight hours and the 10Q, 10K within 24 hours. Data from the U.S. bank regulatory filings are available within the product within 24 hours. In the U.S., commercial and savings banks are required to report granular, standardized reports to the U.S. regulatory agencies every quarter. These regulatory filings are often available prior to public filings of the bank holding company, giving you an early warning indicator of risk and deterioration of credit quality. 
In today's heightened regulatory environment, having transparent data is essential. Many of our clients spend countless hours spreading financials and building out ratios that could be better spent elsewhere. Is there a way that SNL can help risk management teams understand the source of the underlying financials? First, get quick access to source documents. For example, users of the scorecard can click on a liquid assets number and see the original source document in its original language or translated with the exact line item highlighted. Users can also see the components of a calculated item to identify what's driving the underlying result. Speaking of liquid assets, are there specific reasons why the SNL data is a recommended driver of the S&P Global Market Intelligence Bank Scorecard, along with data from S&P Capital IQ platform? Absolutely. SNL's industry-specific financial coverage allows us to provide data points that aren't available in other providers. For example, SNL does not just collect Tier 1 capital under Basel III. We collect regulatory capital ratios under the many different approaches, including standardized or advanced, traditional or fully loaded under Basel I, 2.5, and 3 capital regimes. We will always calculate key risk ratios in the event that they are not directly reported. SNL also utilizes its knowledge of the bank regulatory space to offer a more objective definition for what are sometimes subjective metrics, um, such, as liquid, uh, such as liquid assets, by leveraging guidance published by the U.S. regulatory agencies. Thanks, Jessica. Great overview of the SNL bank data, which I know is especially important for many of our viewers who, in general, manage low default portfolios that, by definition, lack the extensive internal default data necessary for the construction of statistical models that can be robustly calibrated and validated. Now, Rad, let's focus first on the S&P Global Market Intelligence Scorecards and then specifically discuss the bank scorecard. So, Rad, tell us about the scorecards. Sure, Bob. Uh, the scorecards are expert judgment-based uh, credit scoring tools. They help credit analysts objectively assess and combine financial statement data and also qualitative information to arrive at an aggregate risk score for an obligor. Because the methodology underlying uh, each scorecard is broadly aligned with the S&P ratings methodology, the output of the scorecard can robustly be mapped to an S&P global ratings uh, grade and also an institution's own internal rating scale. Right, you mentioned qualitative risk factors. Can you show me an example? Sure. Uh, well, we know that best practices of rating systems suggest using qualitative expert judgment-based risk factors in addition to quantitative ones to effectively capture the uh, heterogeneous credit risk nature of complex sectors such as banks. And this is also the way scorecards bring in the uh, forward-looking uh, opinions about how the current credit worthiness of an uh, obligor is likely to evolve from the position observed in the uh, most recent financial statements. And uh, we can also say that a key shortcoming of strictly quantitative models is their bias towards the variables that tend to reflect the easily quantified phenomena and, and the ones for which uh, available data are abundant. So what happens is that this can leave out some important drivers such as uh, risk appetite, complexity, and loss experience that, that aim to capture the uh, management's uh, tolerance for risk and, and willingness to uh, accept higher uh, complexity. Uh, and also uh, things like uh, financial flexibility that uh, tend to uh, uh, give us some information about availability of funding in a stressed market condition. Thanks for describing some important qualitative bank risk factors. Now, can you share how our clients can achieve the analyst to analyst and year to year consistency in scoring those elements you just mentioned? Sure, well, qualitative uh, factors present some uh, challenges uh, in terms of uh, criteria for the consistent and, and replicable assessment, since we know that there is a, a risk of multiple or different interpretations of the same uh, judgmental concept. And the answer to this challenge is in defining in a, in a very detailed, consistent, and objective manner how these factors should be evaluated. And as you can see here on the screen, uh, this is an example of a, a qualitative scoring guideline for a factor 
uh, where we identify the detailed attributes associated with each uh, risk assessment level. So for this risk factor, actually due to space constraints, we are, we are sharing only three uh, of the seven potential scoring levels that range from very strong to very weak. But these scoring levels are mapped to uh, quantitative adjustments to risk scores. So the score, uh, very weak, could actually result in a uh, downward notching of the entire risk dimension by, for example, three notches. Using the bank scorecard as an example, how does the scorecard help practitioners streamline their workflow? Well, this, this is where uh, integrating the bank scorecard with SNL banking data uh, comes into play. We automate the uh, spreading of financial ratio data using Excel plugin feature, uh, ensuring a powerful scoring convenience for users. Uh, we also automate the uh, uh, application of country-specific economic and banking in, uh, industry risk assessments, drawing from S&P's sovereign and banking industry uh, country risk scores. So to illustrate this, the, the bank scorecard with SNL data with a plug-in feature uh, was designed to automatically spread the financial data in the bank scorecard for around 90 or so countries where we have pre-populated the banking industry and country risk scores from S&P. Uh, and now by using simple drop-down menus in Excel, uh, all you have to do is identify the country, uh, name of the bank, uh, currency you want to uh, display the results in, and the fiscal period uh, you wish to use for uh, the scoring process. And then uh, with one click, uh, the data is going to be automatically refreshed. That is fast and convenient. Now it's time to transition to the third topic of today's video. In a case study format, we will demonstrate how the marriage of SNL financial data and the bank scorecard can help you recognize at an early stage weakening bank credit quality. Over the years, we observed that bank credit quality could deteriorate quickly. So it's essential to have a set of tools that can help you build a credit life cycle workflow process, taking you from origination through loan approval and include portfolio monitoring and surveillance. In our next section, we would like to demonstrate how you can apply a tool like the bank scorecard to your workflow. To demonstrate the value using the S&P Global Market Intelligence Bank Scorecard, now combined with the power of our SNL bank data, we'd like to use Venito Bank as a case study example. With assets of 33 billion euros, Veneto Bank is a mid-sized commercial bank focused in Italy's northern region where 70% of the loans are concentrated. After completing several acquisitions over the past 10 years, Veneto Bank has increased its geographic diversification and is now present in 15 Italian regions. Still, Veneto Bank lacks the geographic and business diversification of its larger domestic peers and has been mired in deposit outflows and losses. At the extraordinary general meeting in December 2015, Venito's shareholders voted in favor of the transformation of the bank into a joint stock company, its listing and a capital raising of 1 billion euros by April 2016. Jessica, by conducting a search on Venito Bank using SNL bank data, what can we learn? Quite a bit. For example, Venito Bank is in charge of Venito Banca Group and considered of systemic importance by the ECB. They are one of the many Italian banks struggling with rising non-performing loans and economic turmoil. In July, Veneto's board resigned and the institution was taken over by Italy's Atlante Rescue Fund. They have a high concentration of mortgage loans in European markets and their liquidity coverage ratio has been in steep decline. Right, given the profile that Jessica provided, what would you be looking for when you conduct your credit analysis on the bank? Sure, well, I'll first look at the financial results, of course, profitability metrics, um, increasing non-performing loans, for example, and credit losses uh, and uh, also the ultimate impact on, on the capital levels. So obviously a continued decline in customer deposits would be a, a, a big warning signal at this point, uh, especially knowing what we now know about Italy's struggle to overcome opposition from the European authorities to a uh, rescue plan for four small banks and the uh, new and stricter rules for uh, winding down lenders coming into place. 
So the concern is that this could scare small savers away from what has traditionally been uh, the key source of funding for uh, Italian banks and possibly trigger more bank runs. Jessica, what type of alerts can we set up within SNL Bank Data to allow us to monitor Veneto Bank closely? There are several options. In this case, I think what works best is a combination of our credit risk dashboard and email alerts for news and documents. Our credit risk dashboard shows CDS and stock price moves as well as streaming news for your covered companies, all in one page. Our news and document email alerts can be customized to a list of companies and specific document types like press releases or quarterly filings. Most helpful, any time your covered companies are mentioned in one of our industry research pieces, you'll be alerted. SNL publishes periodic articles highlighting banks that are undercapitalized, have high loss rates, poor earnings performance, as well as banks that have been issued enforcement actions by their regulator. This banking-focused news coverage complements the credit analysis leveraged in the bank scorecard. Now it's time to drill down into the scoring process for Italy-based Veneto Bank using the SNL Bank Data and S&P Global Market Intelligence Scorecard. Using the SNL data through 2013 in SNL plugin, we ran the scorecard and generated a score of double B. We then ran the scorecard using data through 2015 and generated a score of single B. That is a three-notch decline in two years, which is quite substantial. So Rad, what first does a deterioration of this magnitude mean? And why does it matter? Well, it, it matters quite a bit. Uh, first of all, given the broad alignment of our bank scorecard with S&P's bank global rating methodology, um, we can then map the scorecard outputs not only to S&P's rating grades, but also the observed default rates associated with these uh, grades in various long-term studies. As indicated on this graph, the three-notch decline in credit quality uh, has actually accelerated the likelihood of default exponentially. Specifically, the one-year default rate for a double B that you mentioned was uh, a more manageable 0.47%, uh, whereas the default rate for a single B is a uh, much more alarming 6.37%. Red, what happened at Veneto Bank that caused such a rapid decline in credit quality? Well, we believe that the negative flow of news surrounding the res resolution of four small Italian banks definitely has something to do with, with, with that. But uh, also under the new rules coming uh, in from January uh, in, in Europe, bank shareholders and bondholders as well as depositors with more than 100,000 euros will have to bear losses before any public money can be used to prop up a, uh, a bank. At the same time, uh, we also see that uh, this bank has uh, recently experienced significant funding outflows, weak profitability, and uh, also embarked on a uh, urgent capital enhancing measure. Uh, uh, on top of that, the scorecard points to a weakening of uh, the profitability metrics driven by pressure on revenues and uh, high loan loss provisions. We, we can see that at the year end of 2015, the uh, non-performing loans ratio reached a level as high as 28% of gross customer loans, which is well above the average for Italian banks. Jessica, how can an institution be proactive in managing the credit risk for banks? The alerts that we set up would notify us not only of the availability of new financial data as soon as it was released, but the relative standing of Veneto Bank relative to the industry as a whole via SNL data dispatch articles. Monitoring new financial information and understanding a covered company within the context of industry trends helps manage risk. Red, what other early warning signs could we have flagged when we conducted our credit review for Veneto Bank using data through fiscal 2013? Sure, well, what jumps out uh, in reviewing the uh, fiscal 2013 data are the uh, already weak profitability metrics. So we have found that sustained earnings weakness uh, will erode capitalization eventually, leading to a uh, heightened likelihood of bank failure. And as I already mentioned, the uh, trend in customer deposits as an important indicator uh, as well, given that the uh, availability of core deposits 
is the most uh, stable source of funding as opposed to riskier short-term uh, wholesale funding, for example. And another risk factor that is uh, a very good warning sign and goes hand in hand with the uh, decline in customer deposits is a uh, increase in reliance on short-term wholesale funding sources uh, such as uh, repurchase agreement and interbank, interbank sources to compensate for the decline in customer uh, funding. We consider these sources of funding to be vulnerable to changes in investor sentiment and market conditions and uh, we started seeing a weakness in this area at uh, Veneto Bank early on. When you compare the fiscal 2000 result, 2013 results with the 2015 results, where have the biggest changes occurred? Well, there was a weakening across the board in, in, in all areas, but most notably uh, the risk dimensions for a risk position uh, driven by a higher stock of uh, non-performing assets, for example, uh, than the system average and also poor profitability results. In addition to that, um, the, the retail-driven funding structure has been hurt by a major decline in customer deposits through first quarter of uh, 2016. For a weak credit like Veneto Bank, at what frequency would you surveil this bank? Well, since the SNL plugin enables a seamless process to uh, update the financials as they become available, uh, I would say at least quarterly. Uh, for Veneto Bank and uh, other banks with a similar profile, we would suggest also closely monitoring the uh, liquidity, earnings, and funding stru structure as well as capital ratios. We discussed earlier how we derive our qualitative risk factors. Talk about their importance in the scorecard and the impact on the credit scoring for Veneto Bank. Sure. Well. By their nature, uh, qualitative risk factors are forward-looking assessments, uh, which when combined with the uh, financial metrics, uh, leads to an outcome that's highly predictive of uh, default. Uh, the scorecard does have six qualitative risk factors contributing to the overall score, and they cover uh, topics from diversity, regulatory requirements, risk concentrations, and risk appetite, uh, as well as loss experience and financial flexibility. Uh, another qualitative um, element or overlay that the S&P scorecard uh, also considers uh, is the fact that, for example, Veneto Bank does have a moderate systemic importance uh, to the uh, Italian uh, government and uh, the Italian government is considered to be supportive of its banking sector and as such we do make a adjustment to include the likelihood of extraordinary government support for, for this bank. Well, that's all for today. For Rad and Jessica, thank you for watching.